fucking bollocks off. But I know I've got another four or five forwards. Jermaine, when it comes too tight to run like that, you give him one ball. Even don't, don't give him it. I'll tell him he's, what you're fucking doing. Rugby league is a sport played by over 800,000 registered men a year in over 70 countries. Extreme toughness is needed as the impacts are immense. Some can train for up to four days a week just to be able to play at an amateur level. For many, playing careers can become their entire lives. So what can happen to men like these when they're no longer able to play? My name's Paul Eiton, I'm an ex for City Reds player, now Salford Red Devils, uh, and I'm now a transition mentor for the RFL. And I've been with 30 of my best friends every day uh, to be working on my own. That in itself was quite alien. Um, and I kind of, once me took my eye off the ball, I went from you know, being this guy who was quite focused, driven, going out, pitching for work, pitching for new business. Once that was up and running, I kind of uh, started to reflect on who I was, what I was, what I'm now not. You know, and these were all things that I was fabricating myself. You know, my friends didn't care that I was Paul, the rugby player, and I'm now just Paul. That was something I was putting on myself, but it was uh, something that I didn't talk to anybody about. And when I think back, you know, there's, there's been phases in my life and phases in my career where I've had to face adversity. I've had to face, you know, some tough times. And, you know, I've never really dealt with um, things like that very well. Paul discovered the problems that players can face soon after calling time on his 20-year career. In many cases, it is thought the sudden change in lifestyle can severely unsettle the men, leaving their mental health in a vulnerable state. A recent study from the University of Huddersfield has found that nearly a quarter of rugby league players, just like Paul, are vulnerable to mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. But with these sporting men being recognised as some of the toughest in the world, what is it about leaving the game that can cause these issues? To try and find out, we've come here to Leeds Beckett University, known for its sporting programmes. Ross Shand is a chartered sports and exercise psychologist here and he believes that the key issues lie in how players identify themselves. I think the problem arises when athletic identity becomes almost exclusive as in I'm only a rugby player uh, and that is all I am so then when that's uh, taken away either through, through injury um, or through retirement that's where some challenges can, can relate in that it's, an, it's a loss of identity. Elite sport is an environment where you don't really want to show weakness. Um, and there's, there's certain research that suggests that weakness is perceived as talking about feelings, emotions, challenges that you're facing. Many players might assume that admitting potential mental health issues could have a negative impact on their team environment. This could be what stops them, as even to amateur players, this atmosphere they have become used to means so much. It's, it's something that I really value. Whenever we go through tough, ma tough parts of matches, it's quite good knowing that they'll sort of follow you. Just something to be a part of where you can keep your bond with people. I think like, you just live and breathe it, like you just can't wait to play. Just playing with, with all your mates and just winning really, just smashing into people and hurting them. <laughs> This hesitancy, however, in coming forward about potential problems could be extremely dangerous. 76% of UK suicides last year were male, and for men aged under 45, suicide is the biggest killer, killing more men each year than road accidents and even cancer. But looking forward, the future of mental health problems and stigma in the sport is looking up. The Rugby Football League is taking the issues very seriously, implementing special coaches like Paul to help players transition to the next phase of their lives safely. It's kind of giving the players exactly what I didn't get as a, as a player. Um, you know, the, the game's dragging itself into the, uh, into the, into the now um, and giving players every opportunity that the next phase of their lives um, are as successful as the, the rugby ones were. Post-retirement planning actually helps that transition, so having an idea of what I would like to do outside of, of rugby and potentially putting those plans in place whilst you're uh, still playing, which is going to ease that transition out of the sport and, and potentially opens up your identity so you're not just a rugby, rugby league player. 
So with new attitudes and new changes toward helping the mental well-being of players, one thing is now clear. Just as they do on the pitch, these men can push forward for the win.